Guys, I've had enough. Enough of the same tutorial explained by a hundred different people in a hundred slightly different ways making a hundred slightly different spheres. No, enough. This is going to be the one and only tutorial you need for making any kind of distorted sphere. I don't want to see anybody else talk about this ever again, like I have the authority uh, to say that. Either way, uh, here's how you make a distorted sphere the nice, easy, and fast way. Uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up our scene, and the second thing we're going to do is actually apply the displacement to our sphere that makes the sphere that everybody always talks about. So um, for this, I'm using Blender version 2.92. That doesn't happen to be that very relevant, but use whatever version of Blender you want. To set up the scene, uh, whatever version of Blender you're using, these are the things you have to do in common. First of all, in the render settings, make sure you are in cycles. Displacement does not work in Eevee, so uh, make sure that you are in cycles for material displacement, okay? Second of all, take your cube and apply a subdivision surface. You could either do this the way, you know, not the lazy way, the long way by going blah, subdivision surface, whatever, or you could just hit control one, two, three, whatever, where the number is gonna give you the level of subdivision in the viewport, which you can see basically makes our cube a sphere. It's not exactly true, uh, but it's close enough. And the important thing about this is the geometry doesn't have any poles. Uh, for this, I'm gonna go with subdivision level seven. Uh, you can increase this even more for your render, but seven seems to be good for me. Um, thirdly, you are going to go to your environment. This is just for lighting. We are going to load in an HDRI environment texture. I get mine from HDRI Haven. I always use the same one. Whatever. Finally, in the material settings, this is very important or it will not work. Do not complain in my comment section, okay? I'm going to brush you away. Get the people to take you on back, if you know what I mean. Go to the material settings go to the settings of the material settings and then for displacement make sure that it's set to either displacement only or displacement and bump either of these work i've found displacement only works perfectly fine for what i do so we are going to do displacement only have you done all these things good now you are ready to make literally any fucking sphere that you want so shading workspace we are now ready to do our displacement what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to um rendered mode so I can actually see what's going on here. We don't need this light. Um, you can see we have a spheroid type of shape in a environment that makes the lighting look super good. By the way, if you want to hide it, film transparent. Okay, uh, we have the setup. All we need to do is displace it. So I'm going to keep the BSDF as it is. Just put it away over here. We don't care about it. What we care about is the displacement input. So uh, what you're going to do is, first of all, add in a displacement node. This makes it so that whatever we do can be turned into displacement information. Okay, um, one thing you might want to consider, turn the mid-level down to zero so that, so that there's no difference in shrinking uh, when you attach or detach this. Now, what do you plug into the displacement? Long story short, whatever you want. Uh, whatever it is you plug in makes a different kind of sphere. Um, in my case, I'm going to use a noise texture, okay? So you plug it into the height, and you can see, boom, distorted sphere. Um, if you change the settings here, it's going to make different kinds of distorted spheres, whatever. I'm going to go for a very simple one. So I'm going to go with a scale of one, so it's kind of low frequency information, just so it's not overwhelming. Then in the detail, I'm just going to bring this up just so it has a bit more ridges and stuff like this. And then to animate it, all you have to do is go to four dimensional um, noise. So we're taking we're looking at a three dimensional cross section of a four dimensional noise. Don't worry about it. Long story short, this W slider is basically a time or evolution slider to animate this. All you're going to type in is hash frame. This is a driver that looks at the frame number. So frame one, two, three, four, five, you can see it updates. Take this and divide it by a big number so that the animation evolves super slowly. Of course, it's a bit hard to preview in cycles, um, but you can kind of see this thing slowly evolving, okay? And that's how you make any kind of, you know, basic distorted sphere. Uh, the question now is how do you make a interesting one? Well, uh, to make an interesting one, basically what you do is you mix or you combine noises on top of each other. The more you do, uh, the more complicated the effect can look. So for example, super easy uh, thing you could do that has one of the coolest looking results. You take Voronoi Texture. Don't worry about what it means. You just take this, you connect it. And you can see now we have the same kind of thing, but now it's fragmented and it still evolves. Cool. Uh, what if I was to take this and change some of the settings, like I make it smooth F1? Well, now it looks even uh, cooler. Looks like there's uh, ridges without the sharp uh, glacier kind of situation. And you can change the scale to get different resolutions of this. You can change the smoothness to go back and forth between this and, of course, the randomness. But again, the interesting thing here 
is uh, just going back and forth and changing settings and seeing uh, what you uh, like the uh, look of. So I'm just going to change some settings here. You can also do different kinds of um, distance calculations. Again, if you don't know what Voronoi is, don't worry about it. These are basically uh, distance metrics. You can play around with any of these, or you could even animate uh, the Voronoi noise itself. But um, here you go. So now this is a much more complicated looking kind of thing. Uh, what's another kind of sphere we can make? Again, any sphere you want. Uh, let's use another kind of texture, wave texture. Uh, how do we combine this? Well, we could just throw it together, mix RGB. We're gonna mix this noise with this noise. And now you can see, let's make it a little less intense. So one of these is gonna be just this, one of these is just gonna be wave. Let's make it so that there's quite a bit of a blend here. Now you can see we get the same thing, but with ridges that you could uh, distort and do all kinds of things to. Um, so that, that's how you make spheres. I'm going to go uh, one step further and show you how to make a interesting kind of lava sphere. But, you know, this is pretty much the essence of the uh, tutorial. Um, so to make the lava sphere, I'm just going to play around with some of these settings until I like the look of it. I want it to be kind of detailed, but nothing crazy. I'm going to bump this up. Going to bump up the amount of our thing. And by the way, you can also change the strength of this, obviously. Um, I think I'm happy with this for my lava thing. Um, now, to make it look kind of interesting, uh, the rest of the stuff actually happens in the BSDF, right? We've, we're done with our displacement. Uh, with the BSDF, here's what I'd... By the way, if you're wondering about these uh, node previews on the top, uh, there's an add-on in the description, but don't worry about it. Um, to make this thing look interesting, the number one tip I have for you when you're doing these distorted spheres, uh, you're not just going to use like some kind of base color or whatever. I want you to use ambient occlusion to drive this because ambient occlusion is basically saying where's there's self-shadowing and that is going to be dependent on the displacement we have here. Um, in other words, it should look like it's tied into the displacement itself. So I'm just making it a high contrast ambient occlusion. You can see this animates with it. So it's just always going to show us basically a concavity or a ridge map um, that updates on the fly. And you can use this to drive whatever. You could use it to drive the base color. Uh, you could use it to, dri to drive something else. I'm going to make this shade smooth. Um, in my case, I'm going to use it to drive emission because we want it to glow. So I'm going to take this, connect it to the emission strength. So now you can see if I make it a, uh, I don't know, make it glow red, it's only going to glow on the high areas. We actually want to invert that. So I'm just going to boop, boop, inverted. Um, so you can see it's only going to glow in these areas. To make it look nice and lava-y, I'm going to make it black, the base color, and super shiny. So it's nice and reflective. Um, and now the rest of this is really just making it look not boring, like just red. Um, so for the glow, I'm just going to use another color ramp. This is going to determine the color of our glow, connect this to the emission color. Uh, we can have one of these handles be red like we had before. So you can see it's popping up here and then it transitions to white. So you can see we could pick multiple colors for our glowing. I'm going to have it go from red to orange to yellow. That way it's covering a good amount of the uh, spectrum here. And also, if you were to... Uh, do a bit of an addition here immediately you get like a different kind of effect where you could go negative and get kind of a nega like negative um kind of lava -y thing where it actually subtracts away light or you can make it positive and do whatever you can play with the contrast whoops other way and uh get a cool looking kind of thing um also this is going to be our main control for what is and is not uh, glowing uh, but you can see, you can use these distorted spheres to make whatever, and uh, that's the essence of it. So, at this part, or at this point, you already know how to make it. Uh, now I want to talk about how to render it in a way that doesn't take uh, forever, because this is a displacement-driven effect, and even though it's just a sphere, um, displacement takes a while, especially if you're running on, like, a crappy laptop or something like that, or maybe you just want to render faster. So, uh, this video is sponsored by Concierge Render. I've talked about them before. They're a render farm, a GPU render farm, if you pick GPU, uh, that should render substantially faster than even a good computer, if you have that. So, uh, let's talk about how to set up a scene for concierge render and how to render on the render farm. Okay, so here we have the blend that we made. It's the lava sphere, it's animated, and this is what I want to render with concierge render. Well, uh, first thing we need to do is we need to set up our blend. 
We're then going to upload our blend to the render farm, and then we are going to download the output. But first of all, setting up the blend, here's how we do it. Uh, so once we're happy with all this, just two things you need to do. First of all, uh, file, cleanup, unuse data blocks. This will just get rid of anything that you deleted that doesn't really need to be there. Like we do deleted a light, so we can get rid of that. It just makes your blend lighter. In this case, it doesn't matter too much. Uh, second thing you need to do, file, uh, external data. I've already done this part, but enable automatically pack into blend. Uh, what this is going to do is it's going to pack any image textures, any HDRIs in our case. Um, anything that you used for this blend, it's going to put it inside the actual file uh, because it's necessary for the render. So for this part, it, or for this uh, project, it's important because we did have an HDRI. Um, other than that, uh, just save it with a good name that you can uh, remember. I'm going to call it um, Sphere thing. That's what it is. Um, and now we are ready for concierge render. So I will meet you there in a second. Okay, so this is conciergerender.com. You want to make an account if you do not already have one. And if you don't have one, you're in luck because you get $5 in free render credits, which is a substantial amount, um, especially if you're not rendering a like super like 10 minute long animation. You get $5 in free render credits. I already have an account, so I'm just going to log in here. And then it's going to put us in the dashboard uh, where we just need to upload the thing and you know, get the thing to render. To do this, go to upload and launch renders. We are going to upload our blend file. Um, in our case, it's called sphere thing. And you see we have all the other blends that I've uploaded in the past. Maybe you were here for Mega Vibes tutorial. That was a good one. Um, either way, upload the blend. Shouldn't take too long, assuming your blend isn't massive. Um, and then in the sphere thing blend, I'm gonna go to actions, launch render. It's gonna think about it for a second. Um, and then we just pick uh, render settings and stuff for this uh, before we actually render. Okay, so here are the settings. Um, in my case, I'm using Blender version 2.92, so I'm gonna keep it that way. Uh, by the way, most of these sh uh, settings should be auto imported, so you shouldn't be changing too much here. Um, Blender 2.92, rendering with cycles, that's important, otherwise displacement won't be there. Rendering an animation, not just a single frame. Next, frames and resolution. Um, this is a good point. If you don't set this up in your actual blend, like I didn't really pick my frame in and out or my resolution or my samples, you could just do it here. It doesn't matter too much. Um, so I'm just going to do like the first 150 frames. So it's going 24 frames per second. That's like five seconds-ish, a bit more of animation. For the resolution, I'm going to keep it at 1080p, which is the native resolution, which is the same as this and this. Native resolution's fine. And for the samples, I'm going to do 300 samples. The more samples you do, the better. But we have a mission, so it shouldn't be too bad. Uh, hardware, uh, basically, as you go down this list, you get faster and faster and faster hardware for slightly more um, the faster you go, which makes sense because you get your output much faster, you pay a bit more. Um, in my case, I'm fine waiting, uh, not too long anyways, uh, so I'm just going to keep it at the basic. It's only going to render in a couple minutes rather than hours. So basic thing, hit render. It's going to go to the job manager. You go to the job manager, you go to the details, and you can see uh, what it's doing right now is setting up our project. It's going to have the uh, start and end time, and it's going to give us a um, estimate and then a final calculation for how much this render costs. Um, so I will be back once it is rendered. Okay, our render is complete. You can see all the frames are gonna be down here. You can see the start and end time and how much the entire thing costs. So it cost roughly uh, $2 uh, to render, what was it, a couple seconds of animation, uh, which is pretty good. I think on my computer, which is fairly substantial, it would take an hour or two, uh, depending on the sample count. So uh, there you go. You can download uh, these one at a time, like a madman, or on the top, you just click download all outputs. But you can see, uh, here are all our lava frames. Pretty boring, <laughs> uh, but we did render those out. So uh, check out Concierge Render if you want uh, faster renders and you want to do it with a render farm. They're a great choice. But other than that, that's the essence of the tutorial. Now you know how to make spheres and you never need to watch another tutorial about this again. So uh, hopefully you learned something and uh, that's it. See ya.